So at three o'clock in the morning, the dog starts going absolutely crazy, nuts, barking, growling, everything. Now what you need to understand is I live on 10 acres and on that 10 acres, we have some employee housing and we have some storage sheds and some work equipment and where we park all the work trucks, the office. There's a lot of stuff that needs to have an eye kept on it and somebody being there at three o'clock in the morning shouldn't be happening. So I get dressed, grab a pew pew, and head out of the house with a flashlight. I give a phone call to my brother who lives on the other end of the property. Now listen, if you're gonna go looking for things that go bump in the night, there's no better person to go with than my brother because the boogeyman is scared of my brother, okay? I give him a call and I'm like, hey, dog's going crazy, there's something. He's like, all right, I'll meet you. And he starts walking from his house and I start walking from my house and we get to the main road on the property and there's a guy. Now the guy's walking towards me. My brother is behind him. The guy does not see my brother, which is normal. Nobody really sees my brother. And I go walking towards the guy. And at about 30 feet, I said, can you help me? And I shine a flashlight in his face because you're on my property and I get to see and you don't. And he says, well, I'm just going for a walk. And as soon as he's illuminated with a flashlight, I see that swung over his shoulder is a golf club. Someone in a pair of shorts, no shirt, sneakers, no socks, is carrying a golf club at three o'clock on my property. He's not here to have tea with me. He's probably out for some nefarious purpose. And I was like, that's all fine, well and good for you to go on a walk, but you're gonna do it someplace else. Get off my property. To which he responds, I'll walk where I want to. As soon as he said that, I heard the subtle and distinct sound of a Glock 19 sliding out of a Serpa holder. The gentleman that was trespassing on my property was not paying enough of attention to hear that very subtle sound. I did though. I decide that perhaps a direct confrontation is not the best thing to have going on. So I stand right where I'm at. I'm not going anywhere. This guy's not going anywhere, and my brother behind him, not going anywhere. I pick up the phone, and I call the Buncombe County Sheriff's Department. And I explain to them that there's a trespasser on our property, and we would like the Sheriff's Department to come remove him. The Sheriff's Department dispatcher lets us know that they're not busy tonight, and that there are two officers en route right now. And then the dispatcher says, is this James Butler? And I said, yes, it is. And she said, thank you very much. The officers are en route. At which point, the guy doesn't go back or forward. He takes off running through a field to the right. There's only one place that field goes, and that's to a unit of employee housing. There's really nowhere else for him to go, anywhere else on the property without him having to go over a four foot barbed wire cattle fence. So we know where he's at. So I, I give a quick phone call to the employee that lives there. I'm like, hey man, make sure your doors are locked. There's a crazy guy on property. He's like, not a problem, man. And my brother and I both walk down to the entrance of the property to meet the sheriff's deputies. And my brother wanders off. The sheriff's deputies pull in, the first car, and then the second car. And the first car, the guy gets out and is standing between his car and the door and looks over at me and says, are you carrying a gun? And I said, yes, sir. And at the same time, the second car is pulled up and the second officer is getting out. And he says, why didn't you let dispatch know there were firearms involved? Before I could answer, the second sheriff's deputy says, you should have read the call notes. There's a note on this address. Everyone on this property carries. The first sheriff's deputy, kind of being a little bit of a dick, is like, I didn't see any notes. The second deputy, who's read the call notes and read the notes for our property, knows two things. Number one, me and my brother always carry. Number two, anywhere I'm at, my brother is nearby. So he asked me, where's your brother at? To which, from behind both of them, in the dark, on the other side of the tree, 50 feet away, you hear my brother go, right here behind you. At that moment, the first sheriff's deputy, the one that was being a little bit of a dick, damn near jumps out of his skin. The fact that my brother was behind him scared the ever-living shit out of this guy. And my brother wasn't right behind him. He was a good 50 feet back, okay? It's not like he was an imminent threat. And the first sheriff's deputy looks back over his shoulder, shines a flashlight, and goes, what the hell are you doing over there? And my brother calmly says, I live here. What are you doing? The second sheriff's deputy jumps in. He's like, listen. This is James, this is his brother. I've known him for years. They're both bail bondsmen. They're cool. Let's go find this trespasser. Carl says, I'm going this way. By him saying, I'm going this way, means he's cutting through an area of the property that has no path. 
is overgrown with thorns and briars and bushes and everything, and it's more of a direct path to employee housing. Except there's no path there. It's just woods. Meanwhile, me and the two sheriff's deputies get in our cars and drive up, and sure enough, in the driveway of employee housing, there is the guy. Golf club swung over his shoulder, walking back and forth on the short length of the driveway, talking to himself. And my brother is already there. We drove, he went on foot, and he got there first. I don't understand. The sheriff's deputies go do their sheriff deputy thing. And they start asking, you know, the really basic questions. Sir, what are you doing here? Walking. Do you know you're trespassing? I walk where I want to. Sir, we're going to ask you to leave the property. To which he gives the most original redneck answer ever. You can go fuck yourself. Great, we've now established the IQ of the trespasser. The sheriff's deputies say, sir, you can leave of your own free will or we will make you leave. And he says, while carrying his golf club, you Barney Fife motherfuckers ain't gonna do shit. I'm here to tell you, you do not say those words to a Buncombe County Sheriff's deputy. These are corn-fed mountain men that don't take shit off nobody. In a fashion that I can only describe as swift and professional, they approached him, seized him, lifted him off of the ground, turned him from being vertical to horizontal, and then slammed his body back into the ground, so much so that I could hear the thump of his chest cavity as he impacted the earth. And then after about three seconds, you hear a wheeze as he draws his first breath into his damn near collapsed lungs. They handcuff him, strip him of his golf club, and pick him up by his arms and legs and drag him to the patrol car, open the back door, and chuck him in it. He was airborne from two feet out of the car into the car. He landed in the car. There was an arc trajectory that took him into the fucking sheriff's deputy's car. Apparently, these Barney Fife motherfuckers are going to do what they're going to do, and you ain't going to do shit to stop them. How could this whole scenario have been avoided? I don't know. Don't be a dick to the cops. In any event, he goes to jail, and I get a $10,000 gift from the sheriff's deputy. Not in money. You see, I'm a bail bondsman, and I have somebody who's run on their bond. If I don't catch them, I have to pay $10,000. And this sheriff's deputy looks at me and goes, hey, are you looking for Adam so-and-so? I was like, I sure am. He says, just want to let you know, he's staying at this address. And he gives me the address. And I'm like, fucking great. Because I've only got like another month to find this guy, okay? And me and my brother, at 3.40 in the morning, once this is all done and over with, go out and find Adam and throw Adam in jail. As we're bringing Adam into the sally port of the jail, we see the drunk guy that was on our property. <laughs> and as we come out of the man lock and into the area there where they receive the prisoners and search them and check them in and all that stuff, the guy that was trespassing on our property sees us with another guy in handcuffs and goes, damn, how many people trespass every night on your property? In any event, I thought it was funny. So that night, we got to watch a trespasser get body slammed and chunked into a truck, and we got to get off of a $10,000 bond. It was a good night, by any standard. I guess I owe my dog a thank you. He is the one that started it all. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you next time.